Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very exciting and probably one of the biggest studies that was released by NASA in the last few years, suggesting that space travel for human beings is actually a little bit more different from what we expected it to be. In other words, we're going to be talking about the famous twin study that was just released by NASA. Welcome to What the Math. So you might already know what the twin study refers to, but if you don't, this right here is Scott Kelly. Scott Kelly is a retired astronaut that spent approximately a year living on the International Space Station, while his twin brother, Mark Kelly, who, to be honest, I'm not sure which one he is, because they're twins and it's really difficult to tell them apart, but he spent that year living on Earth doing pretty much the same that Scott was doing. In other words, NASA made sure that during the twin study, both astronauts were kind of performing the same tasks. Now, the point of the study, just like with many other twin studies, was actually to try to discover significant changes that the human body might be going through while in space. And the best way to discover these changes is by having twins do the same thing in two different locations. Twin studies are actually very, very, very common um, on Earth with pretty much any kind of a test of a drug or really anything, uh, behavioral studies uh, or any other psychological or biological studies. And so this particular study allowed us to actually find out what exactly happens to a human body in space. Now, it took a while for the actual results to be released, mostly because just like with the picture of a black hole, there was a lot of data to be processed. And so on April of 2019, NASA finally released their very, very comprehensive study on the effects of space travel or just space in general on human body. Now, as you can imagine, it's a pretty long study. There's a lot of stuff that they discovered, but I'm going to try to summarize this as much as I can. And I think one of the biggest discoveries is that unlike earlier portrayal of media as this being a relatively negative experience, it turns out that space travel is not actually as bad for humans as we initially thought. So what exactly do I mean by this? Well, what I mean is that our body adapts to it so well that we could potentially actually survive for a very long time without really having any serious problems. But most importantly, we could definitely be able to travel to Mars for approximately six months that it takes to get there and actually have humans land and live on Mars without any kind of serious problems that could potentially jeopardize the mission. Now, one of the first things that uh, was a little bit interesting that they discovered was that there were actually not just a few changes. There were something like several thousand different changes in the genome of and also different biomolecular and genetic changes in the body of the astronaut. So in other words, his body didn't just react by changing one or two things, it was thousands of things. It's essentially as if he became a completely different species of humans. His entire body was trying to adapt to different changes and specifically to the increase in the uh, radiation that you experience in space, but also to the zero-g effects. And a lot of these changes uh, were actually positive, not negative. Now, we do know that for the most part, most astronauts, when they go to space, start experiencing problems with vision. This is something that we're still trying to understand and resolve, but that's maybe one negative change. But at the same time, one of the more unusual positive changes was that the actual genes of Scott Kelly started to increase their protection mechanisms that allowed the genes to self-repair. One of the biggest and I guess one of the strangest changes was actually related to something known as a telomere. If you remember biology from high school, telomeres are responsible for protecting uh, your genetic code or your genes from damage. Their length usually determines um, the age of a person but also uh, prevents the aging or the damage of genes. The longer these things are, the better. Now, um, there's actually a lot of different studies that showed correlation between the length of a telomere and also how long a person might be able to live. And what's super interesting and what's in a sense unusual is that Scott Kelly's uh, telomeres actually became really, really long when he was in space. And this is something that we didn't expect at all. As a matter of fact, most people assumed that his genes would actually be damaged while he was in space. Instead, it seems that the astronauts actually have their genes develop techniques to protect themselves. Now, 
unfortunately, when he came back to Earth, um, the telomeres once again kind of decreased in size, and so they basically returned to the original length. But what this kind of means is that um, you could potentially live in space a very, very, very long and somewhat productive life, and maybe even longer than you would otherwise on Earth. Now, this is still a big assumption, but it is very interesting and definitely requires further investigation. Now, another thing that they discovered was actually related to the moon system. One thing you might know about the International Space Station is that there were actually a lot of people living here. And for the most part, it's not a particularly clean place. As a matter of fact, some of the recent studies discovered that there is literally bacteria everywhere, everywhere you can think of. Because there's no gravity, bacteria just floats around. And that's bacteria from your hands, bacteria from your gut, bacteria from your poop. It's literally the dirtiest place you can imagine. And because of this, it was actually a little bit of a concern that maybe just maybe Scott would actually get sick a lot. And also maybe just maybe his immune system would not really be able to be as efficient. But it turns out even the immune system adapted and really well. And so he was actually administered several different flu shots and he developed immunity to pretty much everything that was um, given to him. So in that sense, it's really good news for future astronauts traveling to Mars um, in that they don't have to worry about getting sick their immune system will be just as strong as it is on Earth, and um, it will adapt to space pretty quickly. The other really interesting um, discovery was that his uh, genetic code actually changed quite dramatically while he was in space, and um, not to the point where he became a different species, but it did essentially start producing uh, slightly different proteins. Now, our body usually produces about 2 million proteins based on about 25,000 different genes that are in your body. And um, a lot of those genes actually got affected in some way. As I mentioned before, um, several thousand changes were observed. And what's really interesting is that when he came back to Earth, even after one year, at least 7% of these changes actually remained with him. So in other words, when he came back to Earth, and even right now, he's a, a slightly different person from when he left. So he's no longer genetically identical to his twin. And this actually has a very interesting implication because when you really think about it, that implies that a person traveling to, let's just say, Mars, and then eventually settling there and deciding to come back to Earth later, might actually come back um, a different species? or at least genetically different from um, what this person was when they left. And this actually has a huge implication for future of human species if we do become an interplanetary and interstellar species. It just means that every time you travel somewhere, by the time you settle there and by the time you have your children on that planet, um, they will be genetically different from what we have on Earth. And these genetic changes will actually occur pretty quickly because of the way that his body reacted to just one year in space. Now, it's still actually kind of interesting to find out if most of these changes were related to the actual zero-g conditions, to low-g conditions, or to um, the radiation that he experienced while in space. You may have watched the video I made previously where I actually took a, a Geiger counter to uh, an airplane, and I took it with me, just to measure the radiation up there and it's, it's really high. Now, if we can actually find a way to figure out if it's the radiation that's causing these changes mostly, or if it's the zero G, it would help us understand what really is happening to human body and how to actually make ourselves better at traveling these distances. And so some of the future studies might actually want to compare what Scott Kelly experienced with what a typical pilot or a flight attendant experiences as well, because flight attendants and pilots actually experience a tremendous amount of radiation as well. There's a lot of radiation up there when you fly in, in an airplane. And if you'd like to find out how much, check out the video that I made approximately a few months ago. And so in a nutshell, um, there's obviously a lot of changes that he went through, and there's a a lot of things we still are yet to discover. We don't really know what's going to happen to Scott in about 10 years, 15 years, but obviously we're going to find out. But as of now, the actual findings, the actual discoveries are 
pretty positive. It's essentially telling us that you could definitely travel to different planets in the solar system. And during that travel, while you're traveling to those locations, your body will adapt to protect you from any kind of a serious damage you might experience from increased radiation and from the zero G conditions that uh, Scott Kelly experienced. Now, hopefully in the next few years, we'll actually get a little bit more understanding about this particular subject. And hopefully by then, we'll be on the way to Mars to try to settle it. But until then, though, I think this study is actually one of the most groundbreaking we have to date. And if you want to check it out, it's in the description below. So it's something that I'm actually super, super happy that we finally managed to achieve because this really gives the International Space Station a whole new reason to exist and to receive more funding because despite its somewhat expensive costs, it's a pretty cool place and will allow us to experiment a little bit more on these unusual effects that humans experience. On that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Um, check out the study in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who loves learning about space and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.